Jy sal ons vir die worship geniet. Kom ons, gee net lekker hande klap, man. Ek, ek denk worship, yes, kom ons, al die kinders, ons love jylle, bless jylle, dankie vir allemaal wat help, die hilo jylle, uh, Lelands, die rand jylle, kom ons gee net vir ons kinders hande klap jylle, ek denk jylle doen so freaking awesome met ons kiets. Um, ek denk ook iets, iemand dat ek wil uitsonder, is Andre vir jou. Dus, jy kan nie eens opstaan, en waar net vir allemaal, dat net weet, net bewis is vir hom, hy het vrijdag een operatie gehad, my sondag in die kerk. Let's just give this guy a En ons praat nie van een klein operatie, ons praat van een rechte operatie, ou, daar bles my hart. En hy wil net by die kerk is, nou, hy, hy, hy wil sy pa kom sy prijs, en hy wil deel wees van ons. So ek meen, hoe awesome is dit nie? Thanks vir dit, ou. Ons love jou vir dit. This, that speaks, that speaks louder than any worship song. So by the way, Kom ons neem die overgave op, het is my net so terwijl ons vir oogend bezig is, ek het nie een skrifgedeelte voorbereid vir die overgave, ons ek gaan grapjes vertel, as jylle fijn is daarmee. <coughs> ek sit, ek sê vir Karli, I don't need a valentine this year, I just need 8 million rand and a faster metabolism. <coughs> ek is so, ek weet nie van jylle nie, maar per tyker gaan het oor perceptie in ons levens, amen? En, um, per tyker kan die lewe so zwaar wees om ons, en ek dink baie goeders gaan in die season verander oor die manier hoe ons na dinge kyk. Nie noodwendig omdat alles net om ons verander nie. Ek sit en ek sien van Aria verochend en ek dink in die grap, hy is, is een ou wat skryf en hy sê my favorite exercise is a cross between a lunge and a crunch. It's called lunge. <laughs> Vir die ons wat die gym nie gaan net nie vang nie. Ok, nie die ons wat gym, ons gemeente gym obviously nie. Hoekal lach jylle nie? <laughs> The, ex- the difference between a lunch and a crunch is lunch. Ok, so, ek is nogal in vir a, vir a lunch vandag, my vrou het vir oogend vergeet of my breakfast te gee en soene en daarom koffie gekry. Um, being cremated is my last chance of a smoking hot body. Okay. Oh, het klink so verkeerd in alle opzichte. Teach your kids about taxes eat 40% of the ice cream. Um, ek het die ander dag probeer, het nie goed gewerk nie. Uh, die ander dag is ons daarna een restaurant, en hulle sê, as so, my, my kie met eiers vooral alleen, hulle sê, boneless chicken. <laughs> ek het nogal geruk, dit is kerp. Um, a sign at the restaurant sê, men go left to the toilets, because women are always right. Ons het het by ons politisch akkuraat gehou, die mans is op die rechterkant, as jy vir oogend bad kom, maar toe gaan moet, as jy blief nie langs aan nie. Well, all the couple is looking at each other, the wife says, you said you will spend your whole life trying to make me happy. He responded by saying, I didn't think I would grow so old. <laughs> Halleluja. So, with that said and done, ek praat so van oogend so bykie op my laaste titel vir Breaking the Cycle, en Terwijl ons praat oor, um, dit is vandag part 5, en ek maak so met klaar met hom, gaan ek so bykie praat oor hope and joy. Hope and joy, sinds vir jou langs jou hope and joy. Kom ons tekst met so ons handen uit ons finansies toe. Vader, dank jy, dit is een voorrecht vir ons om te gee in hierdie seizoen. En jy, ons gee, jy, uit die oorvloed van ons harte, en uit die oortuiging van die leiding van die heilige gees. Ek sê na elke persoon vanochtend, jy, wat een verwachting het, een droom het, wat sy droom nog nie gekom het nie, maar weer dat God is getrouw. En jyre, ons roep vanochtend, jyre, dit in wat nog nie is nie, asof het is. Ons sien vanochtend die maat van ons inkomst, en ek sien die mense terug in die gemeente, elke persoon, wat die hart het vir die koninkryk, sien hulle, in die oorvloed, in Jesus naam. Amen. Die Bijbel sê, kom beproef om daarin, Amen. Ek hoef jyre, ons is in een season, waarin ek geloof ons, wie van jyre voel jyre, kan die jyre in die seizoen beproef? Kom be, op die proefstel, nie beproef nie, op die proefstel. Is there anyone that feel they can put the Lord on, on test? Yeah, I, I really want to challenge you. In the area of finances especially, walk out and call the things that's not, but don't do it with a heavy, laden heart. Do it with a heart full of expectation. Amen? A heart full of expectation. Jere, thank you. I can come and say thank you that your word was and that you wacht over your word. We roep it in Jesus' name. I sit here this week and um, it was my relative, my, I feel like I always have the 23rd October, and then I sit here for a while, for a while, for a while, I don't know who you are, weet waarvan ek praat nie, ek, ek sluit om nie meer in die norm noodwendig sy baie nie, maar nuidag staan ek op en ek het hierdie zwaar gemoed. Wie weet waarvan ek praat? So zwaar gemoed, het voel of ek wil koffie drink onder die, onder die matras. Is, jy, is jy enig iemand wat het al gedoen het? <laughs> ok. 
En die Heere sê vir my, the problem is, is the way you perceive the relationship between hope and joy. Die verhouding tussen hoop en vreugde. Nou ek kan vir die volgende ding kategorie sê. Jy kan nie vir my sê, jy het vreugde, of jy, jy het nie vreugde nie, maar jy het hoop. Amen. As jy nie hoop het nie, dan het jy nie vreugde nie. So dan loop jy met een zwaar gemoed altyd. Alles is te veel, alles is te groot vir jou. Everything is just too challenging, you don't know how to cope. And the relationship between hope and joy, I've never thought too much, gave too much thought to about it. And especially in this week, I, re- I really consider, I said to myself, Lord, I really believe that there is such a close relationship between hope and joy. Because if you have hope, you can be joyous, even though you have not received it, because hope is the substance of, of things which you have not seen yet. It's an expectancy in your heart, and if you don't have a joyous heart, I doubt you will get it. Amen? So, what I wrote here is, I said, joy is actually connected to hope. It's directly connected to hope. So, I don't know about you guys, we are in election times, I hope everyone goes and vote tomorrow. I won't tell you for who to vote, but I will tell you, it's a season, please don't stay at home and don't vote. Do I have any trust in any politicians? No. I can ask you a dear PS team, Kenneth Meshu. Vir my is dit een eenvoudige ding, ek, glo, ek, ek, ek stem hierdie verkiesing vir beginsels. En ek glo, dit is tijd dat die kerk sy stem terugkrijg. Ok? So vir wie jy ook al wil stem, stem vir wie ook al jy wil, maar moet nie nie gaan stem nie. So as wil jy rechtig bemoedig, gaan stem ouwens. Dit is een seisoen waar ons, ons stem nie hulle gaan wout. It's very important for us to wout. Ja. Um, yeah. uh, I don't have any trust in the politicians. Not in the ANC, not in the EFF not in the DA for myself. I can't go with any party that kills children. Okay, I'm against. I'm a Christina Borges. Amen. I won't stand with any party or politician that is pro, not pro-life. I will not go with any party that is pro-gay and lesbianism because I've got a higher authority that leads me. So what do we stand for in this season? I believe the church needs to come back to what is, what is important to Jesus. Okay? So will the, the, the ACDP make a difference? Well, at least if we vote, I believe something can happen in our nation. Are they going to become the next president of the country? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. But more than that, at least we've got the church standing up and growing backbone in this season because we've not had it for quite some time. Okay? And I won't talk about our congregation. I know we, I've got people of high, of, van hoë in, um, integriteit. High integrity people in this congregation. Um, so there where you find hopelessness, we find no joy. Just say to the guy next to you, if you are hopeless, if, if you're in having hopelessness, you will have no joy. Then the opposite of it is also true. There where you find great joy and great hope, you'll find the opposite. Woohoo! Ek is, ek is nog my hele leven lang, ons familie is in gebore en blauwbille in. So ons kon convert na christenskap, en ons kon nog nooit uit die blauwbille ding uitkom, so Cherise nie. Cherise is skreef vir die WP, iemand bid vir. <laughs> Ou, jy kan dit nie so hard skreef, jy gaan pak krijg by ook. <laughs> Halleluja. Ok, so, die gevolg is dit is, dat, ek glo rechtig, dat daar is een hoop, wat in ons harte is, wanneer ook al, as jy hoop kan hee vir jou hevelik, dan kan jy jou joy terugkry. As jy kan begin joy wees, dan sê dit vir my, jy het hoop. Enige ou wat rondloop, any guy that walks around with a long face, has, and does not have joy, I don't believe has any hope. He does not create a culture of hope, and we've been wrongly um, speaking about joy and hope in the church, or I won't say we, myself had, had not a very true, accurate understanding of it. You can measure a person's hope through his joy. Amen? If you come to church and you look like a guy sitting in a suit on the beach, you're the guy with the issue. Amen? It's time for us to... Owens, was op die strand. When you come to church, wie tal strand toe gegaan, dan sê dik back. Behalve vir jou vrou, 
Dit pak nie algemeen. Oké? Okay? <laughs> jy gaan nie strand toe en is dit pak nie. Jy gaan strand toe en is een man ons is aan. Ons gaan vandag ek en duise een jaar en ek kom daar so in en hulle praat van the great white. Toe verwijs die lifeguards na my. Ek is soos what the hell Owens. Ek het ook hard. And okay, so basically, I really believe that if I have to bring joy into this occasion, I believe like I'm so excited to see the sea once again. I've got this expectation, man, I can't wait to hear that the rolling of the waves. Jesus was connected to the sea. I believe that that's a place that makes us happy in any case. Mark um, sok nie, you can go to any sea. You can sunset to the sea to go to the sea. Amen. And... Um, so just here, in, in Nehemiah 8 verse 10, it's my first scripture for the day, it's where Nehemiah is giving the law to the people. Who has ever sat in front of their father and he's reading you, he's reading to you um, the law. He's telling you what you're going to do and in your heart you feel happy about it. Who, who's, who's ever heard? The, the law is always a, a measure of restriction, am I right? Now Nehemiah is reading the law, but what you can't, if what people don't understand is if we are joyous about the law, about man, God, you are good for us. And even there where we fall short, we know a God that is, was, and will be. You've been faithful, man. You came through for Adam from the beginning. You've made a way. And now you think he's going to leave you out. And sometimes we tend, when we read through things, and especially when we need to catch up with God's heart, we tend to burden our hearts. And listen what Nehemiah says. He said, then he said to them, go your way, eat fat. Just so quickly, ju- that's just a radical statement by itself. Eat fat. Wie hou vir hy vekie op die steik of op die boltong? Ok? Sê dit vir die ouwe, jy is een rechte boer. Ok? Een cholesterol hapie. So stikkie skoon cholesterol. Ek het nou gehoor, ek moet dit nou blijf van nie meer eet nie. Maar die Bible sê dat die vet is die wiesel. The fat is whose? It's the Lord. In the biblical times, the fat was given to God. It was, it was a sacrifice to Him. And I believe, that's why I believe we'll speak Afrikaans in, 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 in heaven. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that we will have steak with fat. Amen? Because it was sacrificed to God as holy. He says, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, Rosé, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. Send something to someone who is not prepared or does not have an expectation. Who's not in their heart ready to feast yet. Who's not in their heart glad about the tiding. About what God is saying. And listen here. And do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And what Nehemiah is telling the people, remember, they are grieved. They are in a land which is not theirs. They are sitting and they are going back to the, the promise what God is giving to them. And they have to rebuild something and they find opposition as far as they go. And when you find opposition in your life and you go and lie down, you've already lost the battle. You can't go and lie down because you've got opposition. Opposition tells you that God's hand is going to move firmly upon you. Amen? Amen. Opposition should tell you that God is about to do something great in your life because you're a person of expectancy. And you're a person of hope. And how can I determine, I told you guys in the previous weeks, that James says, show me your works and I'll tell you what your belief is. Show me how you are. Let me look at your outward expression of faith and I'll tell you where your inward expectation is. I will show you exactly where your expectation is. And the problem is with the churches is that we've lost our expressions. We've lost our expression to go to Him in a time that we don't know how. We, we don't have the answers. Guys, do you know what's the best thing? We live in the time of Google, but even Google does not have the, all the answers. Because the Bible says that He is the truth, the way, and the life. Truth is found in Jesus and in Him alone. I found one of my friends the other day. Um, he's a Hindu, he's not a believer if you don't have non-Christian friends you're missing the mark you must have friends which is not necessarily believers and it doesn't mean you party with them it means you bring them to, you, to your stand I said to him, Keith, I heard you've got cancer he said, yes, and I'm very sick he said, but I don't want to be around my family because they remind me of the sickness that's in my body I said, I, I want to tell you something, Keith I said, I believe that there's a God that you even though you're a Hindu 
He says, yes, I believe in all the gods. I said, but he will reveal you to be the only one. He will reveal himself to be faithful in your life. I'm going to pray to you, and I'm not going to make it cheap and pray over the phone. I want to lay my hands on you. I want to anoint you, as the Bible says. And we will trust the God that answers with fire. Amen? Amen. I want to tell you that there, there should be something in our hearts in this season that says, Lord, hear him, I use me. So the word open out time is like a wish. I wish it will happen. It's like taking a shot in the dark. Amen? If people say, man, I've got hope, it means in our terminology that I wish that the Lord will come through for me. I wish that the Lord will heal me. Hope there is not what, in the biblical terms, that's not at all what hope means. The word hope in the Bible is a joyful anticipation for good. I'm going to say it again. The word hope in the Bible is projected as a joyful anticipation for good. So it's not taking a shot in the dark. It is being joyous in waiting and saying, Lord, I know you're going to do it. I know you are faithful. Uh, guys, the Lord has been watching over you since your birth. The Bible says He even knitted you in your mother's womb. He counted your hair this morning. And then the Word says, He is the kenner van die hart en die prover van die nieder. He knows the heart. He knows your body. He knows your condition. And yet we think that he slips on small details. That he misses it. So what should happen? We should have this joyous expectation. What is a joyous expectation? Woohoo! It's like before Blue Bull game, we already know what the results will be. You walk in with a confidence knowing, and if it's not there, you know next year is another year. Amen? Yes, I remember those days, 92-10. It was like the Nokia, they called the Blue Bulls the Nokia players. Who can remember it? 2001, 2002, then when they lost, it was like 92, 10, <laughs> 35, 2. I mean, they were like, yes, you're right. It was not nice being in church then. Okay? It was not nice being between the Blue Bulls. Back in those days, I was in Neville's church, and we had a few of the Blue Bull players coming there, Bucky's Buerta, Victor Matfield. Man, it was, the guys' hearts were, it was burdened. But whenever you keep the heart up, whenever you make your heart strong, in reminding it in the promises of God, God will come and meet you. So the word hope in the Bible is a joyful anticipation for good. It is joy before you. It is the joy that is before you that gets you praying. And you know what, what I've learned? I said to my wife during this week, I said to her, my heart is so heart-pressed. Wie tal gevoel, wie tal gevoel Het voel of jy jylle borrel wijn achter een mier kan gaan uitdrink op jou eie. Ok? En die gevolg is dit is, ek sit en ek sê vir jyre, jyre, coach my hart, om dier moeilike seisoene of tye wat ek sikkel om te sien, nog steeds hoop te hou in jy. Om nog steeds een verwachting te in jy. So the anticipation of good that is an equal in the measure of joy as to how you feel after you get the breakthrough. Gaan om weer sê. Anticipation, wanneer jy die verwachting het vir goed, is the equal measure of joy as to how you feel after you get the breakthrough. So whenever you say to me, you've got hope, you should handle or conduct yourself in such a fashion that it is equal or the equivalent of that which you receive after you get the good news. Met ander woorde, kom ek verduidelik het in Boere Afrikaans. Dis soos om een miljoen rand te kry, en dan te sê, dank ek hier die lotto gewen. Amen? Miljoen rand is my baie geld vandag, en kom ons maak het 50 miljoen. Ok? Wie sal blij wees vir 50 miljoen van die oogend? Het die lotto gespeel? <laughs> Moet asjeblief hier die lotto gespeel? <laughs> Ek het, um, ek het gehoor van die kerk, wat nie die oudse geld wil vat nie. Ok, so, it's an equal measure. Whenever you've got hope, it becomes your equal measure of joy. So wat hoop sê vir jou, die joy wat jy voor die tyd het, 
lyk die selfde na die tyd. Vang allemaal wat ek sê vanochtend. I'm going to say it in English. The joy that you have before the time, before the breakthrough, should be the same joy that you experience after the breakthrough. You can't be just joyous because the circumstances have changed. Because then we won't see circumstances change. You need to be joyous in the place, to be content in the place that you are. Not accepting your, your, your tribulation, but coming against it hopefully. Does it make sense? Because when you consider hope and joy, it is the actual nature and character of God. Imagine God was opgeblazen. The Bible said, toe alles gemaakt het, toe sê dit was, Goed, the same word for good is what? Joy. He was joyous about it. When something is good, it's joyous. Amen? If your wife is beautiful in your heart for you, then it makes you joyous. When your children is a delight, it makes you joyous. But you know you should delight over your children, irrelevant of where they are. Amen? Wie weet dat God vindt in het behaag is wanneer ons goed doen nie? God don't just come and meet us when we are doing good. The, ba the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 8 that while we were yet sinners, while we were in the worst condition, He chose us. Amen? He chose you while you were in the worst state of mind. The only thing is for us is to become more into the character and nature of God is to understand what His heart is about joy and hope. And if you can understand that you can be joyous before and before you've got the breakthrough and you can praise Him. The other day I was, I was telling you guys, I said to Werner, I said, Werner, praise the Lord as if the breakthrough for your son is already there. Praise the Lord as if the breakthrough is already there. And the next moment we were at a men's meeting, that guy was dancing, man. He didn't even have, he's, he's white. He, white people can't dance. Okay, you'll see... Um, uh, Ali, stand up, man. Show these guys how black people dance. I want to just show them. Show them. Come on. Must I put music on for you now? Okay, put music on for me. Can I get the black people in front, please? <laughs> Come on, Mpo, why are you sitting there? You think you are white. Where's James? I just want to show these guys how these guys dance. We have a dance-off now. Okay? Sorry, what's your out? Concentreer in die klas. I didn't expect to do this. How are you all doing? We're ready to lift up God's name. We're going to usher in His Come presence. On, We're just asking God to open up the heavens tonight. Come on, go right now. We're waiting for this day. We're gathered in your name. Calling out to you Your glory like a fire Awakening desire Will burn our hearts with truth You're the peace we're here You're the peace we're seeing Amen. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to prove my point. Ruan, come for my foot and two. Come, let's go for my foot and two. Come. Willem, Willem, come. Ruan, come. Come, Ruan. We sit at two Ruans in the eyes. Johan, let us see. Come down, sir. Siegfried, where are you? Okay, let us sing. Go to the this to move. Okay, swear, go and wear. Let us wear. How you all doing? We're ready to lift up God's name. 
We're going to usher in His presence. We're just asking God to open up the heavens tonight. Guys, I'm not going to be funny, but I'm going to be honest today. This morning, I'll go with Dunnekin and I'll say the All Blacks just won. Okay, <laughs> let's just give the guys a hand. Maar Johan, met die type moves ou, ek gaan met die girls keer vandag. Daar was moves, that just did it. Man, kos geen weer vlaan het lap, that's awesome. If your joy and your hope becomes in the likeness of God's character, if you can understand this, guys, this is church. Jy gaan per ty mense kry wat so bedroef is, oor dit wat so pas gebeur het. Want hoe durf jy in die kerk daans? Owens, die Bible sê Jesus, Jesus, when they, when they came back two by two telling him uh, the reports of what happened, he jumped up and he leaped up and he danced. He danced. The word there is, he gemailioed. He turned around and so a klein bokkie and he danced. He's happy about what God has just done. I can tell you something, if the church, if in this week, in this next few weeks, months, if you're going to seek the Lord in His nature and His character, and having an expectancy beforehand to be joyous because you've got hope in your heart, I want to tell you, if you are joyous, it tells me you've got hope. I want to say to you, your breakthrough is as close as your joy and your hope is waiting and trusting with, with eager expectation in God's character and in His nature. He will come through for you. He has been faithful in the past and He will be faithful again. The only thing about hope is, and joy is, it is super contagious. Amen? Weet nie gevoel dat hulle wil dans nou nie. Amen? Ek kruis my so my been, begins my so maak, ek voel of ek, of ek by Presley's is. Ek wil amper sê taupe is. Ja, dit sal my ouderdom weggeen. So joy and hope is not a phony that denies faith. It is still real faith. It is still relevant. It does not deny the existence of any problems. So when you are joyous and you take hope in a situation, I want to say to you, if you can praise God before your operation, like if you've already received your healing, all's going to be well. En dan maak Romeine 8 een baie relevante stelling. Romans 8, 31 says, that nothing can separate you from the love of God. No death, no angel. So, we don't need to fear. So, it is not the absence of saying, of, of reality. It is still being very real. Lord, my Goliath is in front of me. My problem is still very real. I don't know how I'm going to meet my bills. I don't know, Lord, how I'm going to make it through the night. But the word says, joy comes in the morning. And I'm going to read it to you. Real faith, faith denies the problem a place of influence. I'm going to say it again. Real faith denies the problem a place of influence. Ek moet dit verduidelik, ek kan sien ek preek oor jylle kop is bykie. Ware geloof ontneem, hy weerhou die probleem om een plek van invloed in jou leven te kry. So all that you do is, is when you have faith, and when you have joy, and when you have hope, you say, Lord, this is the fruit of the Spirit. This is how your nature and your character is like. So I'm going to reposition myself, not denying that there is a problem, but I'm not going to give the problem more influence than what you have. So I'm going to praise you as if I've already received the breakthrough beforehand. I'm going to lift up your name. You know what's the problem many times in church? We want to come and say thank you to the Lord because we've got the breakthrough. And now we can lift up holy hands. It is coming to church 
saying, Lord, I don't have a clue, man, but I'm going to praise you. Because something is going to break while I'm doing it. Something is going to open up. The, the word says in, Ro, in, in Revelation 3 that the Lord has given you an open door. No man can shut it. There's nothing that can close the door which God has opened up for you. I want to say to you, if you've got this expectation, expectation, this reality, it will not only become a lifestyle in your life, it will become contagious for everyone around you. Your children will start going into the exams. You know how? Oh, papa, ons het die ding gaan ons vat. Weet al met hulle boeken onder hulle kussing geslaap. And I still made it. <laughs> okay, don't go and try it this year. Uh, <laughs> there's not much grace on it this year. But back in 99, man, were, I, I remember, uh, I went to, I studied with a book under my cushion. <laughs> Amen. The Bible said, Heere, geef ons een rechtvaardig is in hulle slaap. So, Anna, ons gaan leer, hy het my so, super download. <laughs> gaan het klomp ouwe sê wat kwaad is vir my. Die pastoor het gesê. <laughs> okay. So, there's something about the joy of the Lord that repositions us for a breakthrough. Now I want to say to you, sometimes yesterday I felt this burden. And I felt last night when I got into bed, I could so bedroef gevoel. Dat ek nie vir die duivel toegeset, weet jy wat, ek sit nou vir my worship muziek en nou gaan ek omprys. Ek gaan om nou prijs, asof my breakthrough klaar daar is. Because I'm confronted with so many things that needs to happen, things that we need to trust, and I can't see the breakthrough. And then it's so difficult to keep your eye it's like, um, I sp uh, we had a friend, uh, Marquis G uh, Goodwin. He's the quarterback for the Texas Rangers in America. Um, he's one of the highest sportsmen paid in history. I think his net for one year was something like 75 million US. And um, we met them in Thailand, myself and my wife, after they've just lost their baby. His wife just had a miscarriage. And it was so hard for their hearts. And I remember, he, I went and I went and looked him up and I Facebook scouted him to see if he's really this impressive as he, he, he said. And he was. And then I saw the, the clip where he went and he found out his wife just had a miscarriage. And now he must go and play. And because he's a believer, he ran onto the field. He had the best season and the best game he had seven tries in one day and the fact was is he did it afterwards they interviewed him they said how did you manage and he said because i played for my boy he changed his hurt yeah let's give him a hurt. he changed his expectation of hurt and feeling sorry for himself and he used it for hope I want to say to you this morning, sometimes it doesn't mean it's the absence of real circumstances in our lives. It's the way we conduct and know God's nature to be. And in that, God will be faithful. You can be, be in the worst season of your life about to have the greatest breakthrough and you don't even know it yet. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 35 verse 1. Let's make this practical. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. You guys must turn in your Bibles. Please do bring your Bibles on Sundays. The, 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 the um, word on the back is only for those guys that's lazy. Bring your Bibles and still turn in it. Make notes in your Bibles. Smell it. There's nothing like a hard copy. Eh? And remember, this is a two-edged sword. And you must be acquainted with it. So I really want to challenge you guys. At the end, as we are drawing to the last season of our lives... If I say, even this is the last season of my life, I don't believe so. Okay? But I really believe that the church is going to have to be acquainted with the word of God. And you should not just take things from people that are standing in front of you. Okay? Because there's people coming that's going to deceive us. That's what the word says. So I want to challenge you guys. Please become acquainted with the word. Know the word. Bring your word. Don't leave your word in the car. Uh, you carry your word. Die boer het gesê, sy woord en sy roer. Amen? Dus boere in die vertrek. Kan ek het julle handen sien, is die enige boere. Ok, so jy het jou woord in jou roer by jou. Kom vir die APK kerk, ek sê vir julle, is jy sê klomp bang gehad ouwens die zon. Ok? Ja, ou sê, ek sê vir my, ek sê vir my, ek sê nie, julle allemaal loop met geweer op julle jippe. 
Hij zei, weet het niet, lekker niet, maar tien dus ook niet. <laughs> Ever since I've been implying, <laughs> I've learned from, from people in the op Okay. Okay. The wilderness, okay, so let's go back. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. So who's ever been in the wilderness? Who's been in the Kalahari or in the, in the Karoo? Okay? If it's very dry, it says the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. Those who's not experienced the rain, who's not had the breakthrough, they will be glad. Owens, the yellow aarde wacht met ons reikende verlange vir die seens van God. That's us. The whole earth is waiting with an eager expectation for the sons of God. The desert shall rejoice in blossom like the crocus. Okay? Crocus is a very, it's a prophetic flower. In any case, most prophetic ministries uses the crocus. It's very prophetically of nature. It's got healing properties. It's, 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 a, it's a very significant plant and not everywhere found. Amen? And listen here, it will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. So now we see the desert bringing forth something which it would not necessarily bring forth. It's like speaking a prophetic word into someone that is busy divorcing you. Say to them, you know what? God has a life for you guys. He wants to restore and replace. Am I not right, Werner? Yeah, God's been faithful, man. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The desert now, I want to tell you guys, it's a prophetic word for you this morning. The desert will go out and it will be rejoicing with joy and singing. So what does it tell me? If there's joy, there's, there's hope. Why? Because we've seen that joy and hope is directly connected to one another. So what do we see? Even the nature, the driest places has an expectation for God's goodness. Amen? Amen? Listen here. Where are we now? Verse 2. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Verse 3, very important. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. The Lord does not give. A commission. I want to tell you guys, this is a commission from the Lord. Can you agree with me? The Lord is giving us a commission and He's telling us to strengthen the weak hands and to make firm the feeble knees. Where have we seen this in the Bible? Think about it. Peter comes to the temple. There's a guy sitting right next to the church, the temple, and he, he, he's lame. He cannot walk. And he, he, he looks at Peter and he says, please, can you give me some money? And he says to him, silver and gold I do not have. I don't have much money. But what I do have in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And he pulls up this guy, and the word says, his feet that was feeble started walking. Go read it up, Acts 4. You see a miracle, Jesus reproducing the same miracle which Jesus did at the pool. You know what God is busy doing? He's doing the same miracle within us. He's calling us, it's a prophetic word from the beginning, to call people out. But you can't call anyone out as long as you don't have hope. Because you'll only reproduce what is in you. You'll only give what you have. And I say to myself, Lord, you give us this comm commission to strengthen the weak hands and to make firm the feeble knees. And then it feels if we can't carry it out. And if you didn't intend it for us to carry it out, you think about it. He could have ordained angels and said, Angels, who would you rather listen to this morning? To me or an angel? A 20 feet angel standing here preaching. Who would believe if an angel brought you the message? So the thing is, God does not take the commission away from us. He's ordaining us to step out by faith, irrelevant of how you are feeling, because the righteous shall walk by faith. Amen? I want to tell you, I think an angel would do a much better job than me. Imagine the, the Lord sends the angel into town to go and tell the people about the good news. Who would get repented? But now he's not commissioning angels. Who's he commissioning? Imagine Jesus pitching up at Pick and Pay, standing there preaching. Who would not give their hearts to the Lord? And yet we find it difficult because we believe we measure our expectation in God 
according to the place where we are at. Not having hope and not having joy. And if we have hope and joy, it's not possible to be silent. Who's ever had a grandchild and you would not tell anyone about it? Oh, daar ook kom uit, het lijkt soos antennas. Geen tanden nie. Hy droe, hy laat winde, hy het nie as haare nie, en amal is excited, en niemand kan op hy praat daar oor nie. Is daar enige oma's in die huis? Jylle het alvastie gedink, is die mooiste ding. Ek nog nooit een baba gesien wat mooi is nie. Behalve dier my vrou so, hier raai kinders my, kom ek sê, wat de wetter, gaan hier aan. Wie is jou pa? Hey? Waar is, waar is my kinders? <laughs> ek gaan weer die pen by die huis. He's given us, and he's enabled us divinely to do it. Listen verse 4. So to those who have an anxious heart, be strong. Say to the guy next to you, if your heart is burdened or heavy, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Who needs that word this morning? Is there anyone who needs being saved? For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Is there anyone that needs saving this morning? I can tell you, I need saving mostly from myself. Amen? Mostly from my own stinking thinking. Verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Amen? When shall the eyes of the, of the blind open? It's practical this morning, guys. When shall the eyes of the blind open? After we believe the message. After we go and we apply. After we pray for the feeble knees and the feet. After we step out because we have heard. Not necessarily because we feel good about it. I want to tell you there's many times that I don't feel good. A few Sundays ago, I was re- still feeling sick. I had a COVID test, so... But I was feeling sick. I I, I, I should have called that message death by quitty. <laughs> uh, sickness by quitty. I, I went and I prayed for Tani Quitty and I, I contracted. I believe I contracted. Um, she, she, she took that flu like it was a, a, a flu. I, I was like, <coughs> I went, 80 years, man, you've got a strong immu- immunity. <laughs> I was like, man, almost going out. We told man flu God in the plaque. Net ek en Roan. En Willy. Well done, Willy. And listen here. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. I'm going to read a scripture to you out of Ephesians 4, verse 29 to 32. And I'm reading it out of the Passion Translation. It says, And never let ugly and hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let your words become beautiful gifts that encourages others. So, when Paul's writing this to the church of the Ephesians, he's making a statement. He says, never let ugly and hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let your words become beautiful gifts that encourages others. I want to ask a question this morning. Because when you're hopeful and when you have joy, your words automatically become a beautiful gift unto others. Amen? Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. He's not saying my breakthrough, in my breakthrough is my strength. The joy of the Lord is is my strength. I have hope because my joy is already in the Lord and then I can see the result because of what I'm doing. And now I'm teaching you something. Remember the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Those who love to use it will reap the fruit of it. Either life or death. So whatever you speak today, you will see manifest in the future. That's why he's calling us a prophetic people. Why? Because we are created in His image. What did God do from the beginning? He spoke and there it manifested. He spoke and it was. Whatever you speak needs to be spoken good so that it will manifest. And I've got a lot of people saying to me, No, no, I'm just stating the obvious. When I speak to you about sin in your life or addressing something in your life, I'm most probably just stating the obvious. It's not what I say that happens in your life. It's what you say and as a man thinketh in his head what he believes, what's happening. Listen here. 
So the whole idea is the beautiful gift of words that encourages others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. Speak words of unmerited favor. Speak words of giving them something that they do not deserve. So to declare something over someone in a season which they don't necessarily deserve. Is anyone there? Remember David when he messed up with Bathsheba? He said, Lord, your judgment is fair. I look to you, Lord. Listen here. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you your experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God to take for granted His holy influence in your life. I want to pause quickly there. I want to just quickly speak about the leading of the Holy Spirit. The leading of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that all of us, once you've believed, you've received the fullness of Christ in you. There's none such thing as a big Christian and a small Christian. Okay? Um, this, you get physical big people, but you don't get spiritual big people. Okay? You are either son or you are not. You are either bride or you are not. And we are all things in Him. So, when it comes to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Spirit will tell you to go left and to go right. He will always prompt your heart. And we are so inclined to Him because we've got His Spirit that He will always guide us. He will give us true north always. He'll always speak to our hearts. And the only two things where people miss it is when you are arrogant and self-consumed. When you're so puffed up full of yourself. But whenever you come to God with a humble and, and, and meek heart, God will always guide you in the right direction. Who knows that God takes delight in us? You are delightful in God's sight. Amen? And this morning I want you to understand that when it comes to the leading of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will continually, he, the Bible says He will never leave nor forsake you. He will always be with you. And He convinces you of the truth because you are, you, you've believed. Of righteousness. He convinces you of your right standing with God. Whenever you are not in right standing with God, He will convince, He will convict your heart of this truth. He'll show you, listen man, Matthias, this is, this is your sweet spot. Just move into it. He, he, he convinces, he, he convicts the world of sin. Not the church. The world. The, the church, he, 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 he convinces or convicts of right standing with God. How you are right with God. How God is calling you higher, deeper. Into a more excellent way. Amen. Lay aside bitter words. Temper. Tantrums. Is there any woman that wants to repent at this stage? <laughs> my wife last night was very angry at me. I must mention it in church. Otherwise I would not complete my cycle. <laughs> um... Lay aside bitter words, ten, ta, temper, tantrums, vloermoer, uh, uh, wie weet van dit? Okay? Revenge, profanity, and insults. Lay it aside. But instead be a kind of uh, affectionate towards one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? Then graciously forgive one another in the depth of Christ's love. I want to say to you something, especially out of the Passion Translation, one of the reasons why I love that translation so much in this season is because of how graciously God is, is placing His Word upon our hearts. How He's just ministering to us. You know what He's just saying to you? He says, man, stop acting like a child. Stand up, mature up. Allow me to complete the good work that I've started within you. How do you do it? Yield to the Spirit. Not my will, Lord, let your will be done. Yield to the Spirit every time. No, Lord, I want this. No, no. I want you to go this right. Why? Because I'm going to position you in righteousness. Whenever they receive the word, the law, it was, you've not, you've not. And then you become aware. In, in, when Nehemiah gave the, the, the law, they become, became sin aware. They just saw all these impossibilities for them to get there. But whenever God brings His law, which is written upon our heart, it is the conviction of the new command. Love the Lord your God with all your power, all your might, and all your strength. If you're all what? What God is convicting of, uh, uh, 
us off in this season is, is revealing to us how much and how great His plan is. Let's just get to Isaiah 35 verse 6. So after this, after we've got the leading of this Holy Spirit, listen now. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Yes, I can imagine Jesus when He came to that lame man. The, 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 these four friends brought the, the, their friend to Jesus. and They came through the roof of, of this building. And the next moment, Jesus recognizes their faith. And he tells the guy, on the Sabbath, take your stretcher and go home. He's saying something that he knew would, would um, confront or insult the religious people of the day. And he told this young man, he said, man, you know what? Your friends came here carrying, take your stretcher, go home. Go, go reveal the grace of God to your family. Imagine the expectation in that friend's heart when they heard Jesus was coming to town. The joy they had. They didn't even consider they're, breaking, they're damaging a property. Amen? They were going through the roof. Man, Lord, we're coming to you. We're going to get you in at whatever it takes. I want to say to you, how desperate are you in this season to get to your breakthrough? Because the church has long been speaking that they are de desperate. We've, we've, we've long been declaring, Lord, we want this. But we want to go and beg for it. And the Lord says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken and all their children begging for bread. He's not called us to be beggars. He's called us to be righteous, to stand up in our glory, to know who we are in Christ Jesus. It's to obtain it before that. So if you can praise the Lord for your hurtful back, as if it's already healed, I tell you now, God's going to meet you. He cannot go against. His word will not return back void. And guys, this morning, this is not a message to condemn anyone. If you've in the past maybe not experienced a breakthrough, I said to, to Carly when, when Michaela drowned, I said to her, I choose. I, one, of, one of my ministry people that I, I've got a lot of respect for, um, and I know he's not very famous in all circles, is Rodney Art Brown. And I, the reason why I, I honor Rodney is because of his, his faith or, or his desire. When his daughter passed away, he said to the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to allow this to take me out of ministry because I've seen so many people go out of ministry because of this. I'm going to trust you for a million souls. And he changed his hurt into something that will bring glory. And that's the difference. If we can start praising the Lord, if the breakthrough is already there. Listen here. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Who needs this break forth in the wilderness of streams of water in the desert? Is there anyone that needs water in their desert? Is there anyone that, that, that needs this breakthrough? The burning sand shall become a pool. We told wait, as you strand to gaan, and track your schooner, and say, sand so warm. And loop is a trap, sick is so fun, and by the plek uit te kom, and dan soek jy te koel, tykert jy voete net kan afkoel. He says the burning sand will be like a puddle, a pool of water. It's the grace of God. With other words, the Lord says, you know what? I'm going to come and meet. I'm going to come and meet you. If you've got an expectancy, I'm going to come and meet you. And the thirsty ground spring forth like water in the haunt of a, ja a jackals, where the li they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. Verse 8, very important. And the highway, listen closely, and the highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Like in Isaiah 62. I want to read Isaiah 62. I'll read it now. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. Isn't that the radical word? Now listen, I'm going to read it to you. The verse 8 in the New King James Version. A highway shall be there and a road. And it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for, for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Hear it? Although a fool. Okay, the reason why I'm quoting the scriptures is because verse 8 was so problematic for me in a certain sense. I was always condemned when I read verse 8. 
Because I said to myself, Lord, I, 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 this highway of holiness, but with other words, everything is just about being right. And I understood that I need to participate and be holy. To, I have to be perfect to be on this highway. Amen? And then I was sitting with this, this idea. I said, Lord, man, I can't, I can't get it right. I don't know. And that's why I like the King James Version. It says, a highway shall be there, a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. With other words, those who did not get saved does not get onto the highway. Now, I don't know you, I get by either the N4 as this pike you see in the church, the Drakensberg pike. Amen? A highway means it is trouble-free, it's easier, and it is, it's much more accessible than going through this small road. Amen? The Old Testament, Jesus made a statement in the Old Testament, and He said, the, the road is narrow. It was before the cross. And then he made a statement to the disciples after the rich young man came to him. He said it's easier for a camel to climb through the, the, the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were saying, but Lord, then who can be saved? And he said, which is impossible with man is, is possible with God. And what he was saying was, it is impossible for you. In the Old Testament, it was this narrow way. And no one could enter through it. Because no one knew who the door was or who the person was. But now it's become easy. It's become this highway through which we can go through and people can, can get saved. I remember I, I was on a crusade where Reinhard Bunker was, was preaching. And he said, Jesus became the stop street. Telling people, it's now a highway. Look behind you. Turn away, because you won't go through the shallow road. The New Testament is telling you, man, we can get saved. We can get this kingdom. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have eternal life. But those who did not believe is condemned already because they did not believe in the only Son of God. So the whole idea was not the fact. Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He came to make a highway. And that's the good news this morning, that we can be glad in it. Why? In, in, in what? In the highway. Because we are already on it. You know what's busy happening? Yeah, let's give the Lord a hand. That's a very good time to give the Lord a hand. I said this, mo the mo this morning, we, we fail to celebrate the small things. We fail to celebrate the small breakthroughs. The small things. I want to say to you, Guys, I celebrate the people that on Friday in, in, in theater and Sunday they're sitting in church. Amen. That's worth celebrating. You know what the Lord said to me? He says, or thou a fool shall not go astray. In, in the New King James Version, if you can read it, it says, whoever walks on that road, or thou a fool. I want to say to you, I've seen many fools in church. Many fools. But I say, can you mean to condemn me? No. I'm just, I'm just seeing their fruit. The Bible says just eat their fruit, measure their... The Bible says a fool will never turn. He will continue on his road. He'll bump us. Okay? We are not that. So we're not called to be that. But sometimes you'll find that in church. You'll find someone struggling in an area and he'll be so, be so prideful he would not come out and say, Lord, I want to get healed from it. Because what will the pastor think of me? And I remember being a young pastor, struggling with certain sin in my life. Man, I would go and I said, Lord, I can't, man. How do I repent in front of the people? The people will, everyone will leave the church. The Lord said to me, because you think they are following you. I'm not the road. I'm only on the road. And that's why Paul is saying, follow me like I follow Jesus. Walk like I walk after Jesus. If you, if you can see, if you if you see looking at me, and I'm looking exactly like Jesus, just do what I'm doing. But if I'm not looking like him, man, just keep on doing what Jesus is doing. Uh, bypass me. So in that area where I'm struggling, don't do what I'm doing. Because you'll have the same results. Amen? So are we then there to condemn people? No, surely not. We are there to love people into allness. We are there to see that people get through. Verse 9 and 10, I'm quickly going to read it. No lion shall be there. Say to the guy next to you, no lion shall be there. If you're on the highway, there shall be no lion. Where was Samson going? 
He was going to his Nazi. Huh? He was going to that, to, that, to that poppy. Oh, my, 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 Delilah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And what did he encounter on the road? A leon. A transfaller. Okay, daar van Joe ook sy wereld af. <laughs> en het hom aan sy bek gegryp, maar uit mekaar het geskeer. Rechte blauwbel. Nor shall any ravious beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. So what the Lord is saying on this highway, as we get into this place of righteousness, many times we'll find ourselves on a road by our own foolish desires, and then we encounter these lions on the road. Remember God left the lions in the promised land. That they would. The wild beasts. God left them in the, wild, in, in the promised land. Why? That the people of Israel would always rely back on God. It's not through power nor through might. It's through the Spirit. We need to understand it's the, the promise is always through the Spirit. That's what God has for us. Um, verse 10. And, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy, say the, see the word again, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and singing shall, um, shall flee away. I want to say to you, man, I, I believe there's something in our praise, in our worship. This, this is what happened this morning. I felt a heavy burden on my shoulders lifting this morning, even as I came into church. Amen. Last night, I said to my wife, man, yes, and I'm, I, was, I have to prepare. And this morning I was standing up, Lord, I need to prepare. And I, so I decided I was going to speak on the condition of my illness. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I was going to speak out of the area of my heart which is burdened because I know that God will meet me because the righteous live by faith and not by sight. Amen? So why did I prepare this word? I prepared a word of joy and hope. And even as we came into this morning, as I st stood with these boys over here, I want to tell you, if you've got a heavy heart in church, don't sit at the back. Come, come join the ark boys. These guys are busy worshiping. This is true worship. I want to say to you, something is busy happening in our midst. Don't miss what the glory of God is doing in our midst. I want to read to you Isaiah 62 that I said earlier. Now he's speaking about this highway again. Okay, go through, go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Clear it of stones. So imagine who, who's heard that they are spiking our highways at this stage. Okay, putting spikes on the highway and they're putting stones, throwing stones off the bridges and stuff like that. Okay, a highway is not meant to have obstacles on it. It was never intended or built with that purpose. So whenever you find that on the highway, you must know that some enemy is trying to kill or destroy. And that's not the nature of God. Amen? So Isaiah 62 is already where Isaiah is prophesying the breakthrough. Remember, a few weeks ago I was speaking on Isaiah 60, then I was speaking on Isaiah 61, and then I was speaking on Isaiah 62, the Hepzibah part. So the whole thing about what God is doing is God is clearing stones on the highway, but who has he ordained or commissioned to clear the stones from the highway? The church. And how do we clear the stones from the highway? It is to get on the way and then not to fall over the obstacle or to become an obstacle. I mean, who's, who's read the scripture where it says that Jesus became the chief cornerstone which the builders rejects, rejected and he became an obstacle to the religious people of his time? Now, I want to tell you this morning. You can sit in church and you can either be an obstacle and let everything that's going out about you, all the problems and the issues and the hurts and the pains of the past is becoming such an obstacle that you are becoming a boundary for others not to pass through. Your children are struggling to get past you because all you are stuck in 1979 when you lost your husband or your child or you, you, you got divorced. You know what God wants to do this morning? God wants us to say, I want to change your way of thinking. I want you to, to make a decision, a willful decision to say, Lord, I'm going to clear this highway of any obstacle so that we can go through and that our children can go through, that we can experience the breakthrough and the promise that you have. 
but my taste, we don't have it at this stage and we can't see it. Well, have the joy of the Lord in your heart with an hopeful expectation and see the result because it's going to manifest in your day. It's about to happen in your day. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed the end of the earth, says the daughter of Zion. Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, His rewards is with you and His recompense before you, before Him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Remember what he said in Isaiah 62 verse 3. He said, I will call you Hephzibah because my delight is in her. And I'll call you Beulah because your land will no more be forsaken. And now he's calling you a city no more forsaken. You know what a city, a city that's forsaken means nothing. You can have all the buildings. You can have the land. But if it's a forsaken city, you can go to Japan, there's a forsaken city there. It means nothing. It could have had splendor and glory. And the, the thing what the Lord has shown me in the past few weeks, He said, Matthias, the church has grown into a city which is forsaken. We do not know and realize the destiny and the plans that He has for us. And that's why He continually reminds us there's 33,000 promises of God in His word. Isaiah 29, I can't believe this for you. Nie van die spoed, nie maar van voorspoed. Is dit Jeremia 29 of is een van hulle? Now I'm going to go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3.17 Thou the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines. The produce of the olive fail, and the, the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herds in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like a deer. He makes me tread on the high places to the chore master with stringed instruments. So what he's saying is the following. I want to tell you tonight, you can go into a painful situation, you can go through a divorce, you can go through whatever God puts you in. But whenever you turn to the Lord, He will bring the breakthrough for you. I just want to see where's my song. And what Habakkuk is writing over, he says, I'm not going to serve the Lord on the basis of what I've received, but I'm going to praise Him with a heart that is expecting, full of hope and joy, that He will be good. And if the outcome does not change, I'm not going to change my worship. And if, if, the, if nothing else happens, I'm going to skip to my confession because He's faithful. Think of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They're standing right in front of the king Nebuchadnezzar. He's telling them, right, you should change your confession. They say, there's no way that we are bowing our knees. You know what the king tells his people? He says, go and heat up the oven seven times hotter. Make the oven hotter. And then we're going to throw them into this oven. And you know what they do? The word says they do not change their confession because of the circumstances. They keep to their confession. Now I can tell you they were not standing there and saying, Oh, here I said, believe. They were standing there saying, Oh Lord, I'm going to have an encounter with the one who is, was, and will be. I'm sure of one thing that you might take my life in this life, but I've known him and he is faithful yesterday, today, and up until all eternity. And I will not bow my knee because in my compromise I might just find myself. Selling out on everything he's got for me. You know what the Lord is doing in the church in this season? He's making us uncompromisingly. He's making us with a firm word. He's creating in us a heart that will not speak the, the, the language of that what's happening around us. And that's why I can call people out of their hurt. I can call out somebody who is in heterosexual relationships. Who's in um, idolatry. Or in a fornication. And I can say, you know what? God has a plan for you. Let me show you His plans. Why do you want to compromise something that God has that's so nice? And people will ask me, why are you beating on the homosexuals? I'm not. I'm loving. I love more homosexuals than any of you. I was molested by one. And today I've got the opportunity to walk a road with so many people in that area of hurt. And God is healing them. And He's changing their hearts. And if the homosexual must change, so must the heterosexual guy change. It's the same word. Amen? Let's give the Lord a hand. Yes, man. I'm so excited about what God is doing in the church. Why? Because I believe He's raising up an uncompromisingly generation that's going to stand up. Now, I want to tell you, I'm seeing forward for this, this book of Revelation to come into completion. I'm seeing forward for the next phase of our challenges. 
I'm seeing forward for the Antichrist and whatever is coming with it because I know we, he has never put us in a place where we can't overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Now I want to tell you, church, it's our the most exciting time of the church has just arrived. Why? Because greater miracles will we do. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see ordinary people stepping out, estate agents, doctors, people stepping out, prophesying over people and it's bringing a change in people's hearts. You're going to see people walking out and they're going, to, they're going to father nations. I told you guys, these oaks here in front, they're my sons. I love them, man. Irrelevant if they're white or black. I tell you, I'll take a beating for them anytime. And the thing is, what I love about Habakkuk is how Habakkuk's heart was so sold out on the Lord. Lord, I don't care what the outcome is because I don't follow you for what I'm going to get. I'm following you because your word is ever true. And I know that I've got more in you than anything else. And nothing else in the world can satisfy as you can. There's nothing that I yearn more than your presence. I'm going to read something for you out of Romans 15 verse 13. And I'm almost concluding. Now may God, now may God, the inspiration, now, so hallelujah. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. <laughs> yes. Okay, I want to go through that one again. Now may God, let's read it together. Can we read it together? Okay. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. Guys, I want you to understand what we are reading here. It's speaking about our joy in God. And he's saying he will fill you to an overflowing with an uncontainable joy and a perfect peace. Perfect peace cast out fear. Where there is fear, there's not peace. Perfect love cast out fear. Where there's perfect love, there's perfect peace. I believe that the Lord is doing something so significant in our day that He's dealing with peace. The, it's the peace that surpasses all understanding. You don't need to understand it in the circumstances that you are in. It doesn't need to make sense for you. Because faith is not based on what makes sense. I mean, God is saying in, in, in 2 Kings 3, He's telling the prophet, He says, prophesy and say tomorrow the, all the, the rivers will be full of water. And now everyone is looking to, to the heavens. They're expecting rain. And the next moment, God is breaking a river and the water comes streaming in. Amen? God's doing a thing in our time and we don't need to understand or figure Him out. We need to learn to be obedient and have this expectation because He's so faithful in the past and He's going to be faithful once again. I want to say to you, you need to stand up in a joy and expectation. Listen here. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with His super abundance until you radiate with hope. Can you see the joy? Can you see the hope? So how, does, how do you radiate with hope? Through the Holy Spirit. I say to you, there's something happening in the church of God where the Holy Spirit is once again leading us. He's continually filling us. He's surrounding our lives. He's, he's abundantly filling you with His presence. You are so aware of Him that when you go in, you say, Lord, man, I want to do this. I want to tell you, we are not going to sow our seed out of fear. Never, ever bring your tithe out of fear. Because God does not take appreciation in a, a reluctant giver. Whatever does not proceed out of faith is sin. So what do we do? Man, Lord, I come on your word, and I know your word is the truth. It's the only thing that's fixed. It's more fixed than the foundations of the earth, because it is Christ himself. I step out, and I bring that with an honorable heart, and I trust in you. And I give you my everything without compromise. I tell you, that's the season we're in. I'm saying, Lord, I'm giving it, not because I've got it so figured out, because the righteous shall walk by faith. And it's good to go through these seasons. It's good to remind yourself, Lord, but this is what your word has said. I want to say to you, and even if you are not faithful, God will still be faithful. He's faithful throughout the ages. I love it again where he is. Any slachters. He's not a respecter of persons, but I do believe that 
even though he's not a respecter of persons, that he do respect our faith. He does look out for faith. The Bible said, the, van die Heere, die soek die aarde. the eyes of the Lord goes through and forth upon the earth to those individuals whose hearts are uncompromisingly upon him. The oor van die Heere, die soek die aarde vir diegene wat sy harte onverdeeld is. Wat sy Heere, hier is ek Heere, ek gloe hier woord. I'm going to walk by faith. Lord, this is uncomfortable, but I believe your word. I tell you, I will stick to these values. They'll call us old school. I've never seen anyone say that the sun is too old. It's not, it's not relevant. You can sleep next to a bar of soap and you won't be clean. The only way you can receive it is by applying it. Okay, if you want to smell good, apply the soap. Okay? Something happens when we believe in what God has placed within our lives. So I want to tell you, unless you apply the joy and the hope, you will stay singing a sad sang song. If you are single, a single mother, and you're trusting the Lord for a breakthrough, for a husband, you start praising Him for that man of God that is coming on the horizon. That guy that is so full of faith, and you will recognize Him because He'll wear the crown of glory. You'll see Him being radiant of God. How do you measure Him? Don't go because his pants is halfway on his butt. Don't follow a guy like that. You follow him because he bears fruit. You measure him by his fruit. His word, let his yes be yes, his no be no. You look at his integrity, how he treats people behind their backs. And then you determine if he's a man of God. Amen? Look how he treats the least of people. Jesus came and he always treated the least like if they were right up there. Man, he loved the worst of sinners. How he loved us. I've got three scriptures. Hebrews 12, 2. We look away from the natural realm. And we fasten our gaze unto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. Let's just pause there. Remember this morning, I'm speaking on breaking cycles in our life. I want you to see something about Jesus. It says, we look away. From everything that's natural. Lord, I can't pay this this month. Lord, I've got a two-year-old. He doesn't know. I've made a lot of mistakes, Lord. Lord, I fell with my words. I disappointed. I hurted people around me. What God is saying, He says, He says, look away from this natural realm and fasten your gaze onto Jesus. Because if you look to anything else than Jesus, you're going to end up in a salt pillar like Lot's wife. If you're not busy gazing your eyes towards Jesus, and listen here, as you fasten your gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us, very important. With other words, as I look to Jesus, in my heart is being, something is being birthed because the righteous shall live by faith. He's birthing and he's reaffirming me Telling me who and what I am in Christ Jesus. Showing me my exact imprint that I have become. Because as He is, so am I. That's why the, if, if He speaks about heaven, He says, as in heaven, so on, on earth. He leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because His heart was focused on the joy. Jesus' heart. He was so joyous in coming and dying in our place. He was so joyous about restoring me into my glory. He was so excited and thrilled that He could not leave me alone. He chased after me day and night and seek me out until my heart turned to Him. He would not let go. Oh no, He never lets go. Through my pain and through all my hurts. How he would not let me go. The word says when he met the woman at the well, he went out of his way to have an encounter with this girl. How he would 
go out of his way to meet up with, him, with us. And that is the example that he has set for us. Because his heart was focused on joy, knowing that you would be his. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered his humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. This morning I become so... I become sad in a sense because to think the King of the Kings, the Lord of Lords, has called you by your name. He did not take anything in account. He was not an accountant looking at the balancing sheet. He was so reckless that he said, I'm going to bankrupt myself and I'm going to pay all your bills. So that you can say, Lord, I've made it. And yet we, th we think that he would not come through with our health in our marriage. He would not come through for our children. I want to say to you, you know why our, our, our children are on antidepressants from 10? Because we, as their elders, are not setting hope in their hearts. And hope in the, is the app. If there's hopelessness, it means that there's no joy. You know what we need to go and do with our children? We need to go and repent and tell them, you know what? God has promised a bright future over you. And He's not a man that He should lie. And he's restoring you. And he's giving you victory. And he's, he, he's showing you exactly what he wants for you. And he's telling you to reach for the stars because nothing will be impossible for those who believe. And I want to tell the next generation, this is your season. Don't get weary because of what's going on in the politics. Don't get weary because of the financial situation or because of any sickness of the, or disease. Because Christ conquered all of it. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Because He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he would not count anything higher than the price. Than paying the full price for you. So that He can be restored. I'm concluding Psalm 30 verse 2. O Lord, my healing God, I cried out for a miracle and you healed me. This was David. It was not in an easy time in his life. And he said, Lord, I cried, cried out for a miracle and you healed me. I want to say to you, how many nights don't we battle? I refuse, I say, Lord, I refuse to lie awake because of stress. But I will battle through the night because I know joy comes in the morning. Where do you build hope? You build it on your knees at night. You build it in the dark hours of the night where there seems no victory. That's when Paul and Silas sit in Acts 16. And they were sitting in a jail not knowing where they, what will happen. But they refused to let the change speak harder than the prophetic message which God has placed upon their hearts. And as they sat in a prison, they started worshipping and proclaiming that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And everyone around them gave their hearts to God because Two men refused to let their circumstances speak louder. Verse 3, you brought me back from the brink of death, from the depths below. Now here I am, alive and well, fully restored. This is with 2020 vision. So David, as he's writing this psalm, he's already had the breakthrough. He's already been restored. From what has God restored you in the past? I can tell you one of my biggest yearnings was I wanted family. And now I've got a lovely wife and four beautiful children. And I'm going to just go and throw it away. For one minute. For five minutes. Why? Why would you throw away I want to tell you that which you are having at this stage, it's somebody else is praying for it. The car that you have in the car is another house that you have to go on your feet. Might not be what you would really want, but it's someone else's prayer you are riding with. You know what God is saying to me in this season? He says it's very easy to pray with 2020 vision, but it's before that which David, and look at his stance before it, he said he cried out for a miracle and he healed me. 
Are you crying out or are you keeping quiet? The Bible says you hate even to You don't ask the Lord. You don't speak it. It's time for the church to stand up and to come into a declaration. Come into one agreement with God. With what He has said. Listen, verse 4. Oh, sing and make melody, you steadfast lovers of God. Give thanks to Him every time you reflect on His holiness. And what David is speaking about he, when he's saying, he says, whenever you sing, start singing. You can't sing with a, with, with a heavy laden heart. If you come into church, you sing like, and you, you have no I want to say to you, Buddha, sissy, God wants to come and heal you, man. He wants to restore. So on what do we reflect? On His holiness. His holiness. He's not saying to reflect on your holiness. Because if you are reflecting on what you did yesterday, you would never be able to raise your hands. I can promise you, all of us have sinned in the past week. Am I right? Can I get a hard amen? Now will your wife know what you did. So what did you do? I've learned, and the, the, the word is learning, teaching us to reflect on His holiness. I've learned that His anger lasts just for a moment. Just say to the guy next to you, He's not angry. But His loving favor lasts a lifetime. You know what the Lord showed me when I asked Him about this? He Lord, yes, I feel me to crack a quart from every day. He said to me, it's because that's the way you think. He said that my judgment already came on all your sin at the cross. At the cross will be the minute of judgment. So that you will either reap a lifetime or you will be condemned a lifetime. That's the goodness of God. So I sat with this minute, man. I'm thinking I'm in this minute. One day is a thousand years. One minute is 40 years. He's busy for my eight all. And he's like, no, I'm not out there to get you. Amen? I've learned that his anger lasts for a moment, but his loving favor lasts a lifetime. Since we're over from man, he's going to be good to you. We may weep through the night. And here, I want to tell you, weeping through the night does not mean I'm getting, feeling sorry for myself and I'm putting up on a Don Williams CD with a Branas. In Kola. It's not that. What the weeping means there, it's coming in front of God with an earnest heart. It's coming in front of Him in intercession. I want to say to you, I've learned in the past two years, to write Dr. Ki van ons verdrink, as jy wil weet hoe bid een mal mens, jy bid, jy bid, jy huil, jy weet nie, jy het nie meer genoeg tranen nie. Jou intercessie, jy weet nie meer of het werk nie. You're just crying and you're trusting and you're believing. Now I want to say to you, many of you, you don't need to have words, but you need to have faith. You stand up in faith, even though you are crying, your heart is broken. You stand up and you take this thing, this bull by its horns. And you say, Lord, we're going to break this curse. We're going to break this, this cycle. We're going to uh, deal with this thing. I want to say to you, your breakthrough lies in intercession. How? Because intercession tells me you've got hope. And hope is always connected to joy. But as daybreak, it will turn into shouts of ecstatic joy. Jesus! Now it's Amal Bakar. Amen. Freedom! Who has seen the movie? Brave Heart. It's when a guy has this ecstatic joy. Bala! Now will the campers come and see what he's <laughs> Bring for me the bille. Die bokke. Make die bille on my bokke. You reflect on his holiness. I've learned that his anger lasts for a moment. Listen to of verse 7. I remember boasting. I've got it made. Nothing can stop me now. I'm God's favorite one. He's made me steady as a mountain. I'm going to say it again. 
I've got it made. Nothing can stop me now. Just say to the person next to you, nothing's going to stop you now. I'm God's favorite one. He's made me steady as a mountain, but then suddenly you hid your face from me and I was panic stricken and became depressed. In the confidence that you took, and I want to say to you, here's a key for someone. In the confidence that you took in God, the next moment you found yourself and it felt like if God was looking away. And we know whenever we say God look away, it's because of sin in our life. When Jesus took all the sin upon him on the cross, there was this moment where he said, my God, my God, where are you? He did not feel the Father's eyes upon him. And that's the reason why we will never have to go through it. Verse 8, still I cried out to you. I had hope. Lord God, I shouted out for mercy, saying, What would you gain in my death if I were to go down into the depths of darkness? So what he's doing, he's fighting his depression of his knowledge, knowing the character and the nature of God. And he's returning to the place where he goes into hope because he knows that hope will restore his joy and it will bring back that ecstatic shout that he had. Listen here. Will a grave sing your song? How could death's dust declare your faithfulness? Lord, what will you benefit? That's what Paul is writing. He said, it's beneficial to you that I should remain here. It's beneficial to you that I remain. I want to say to you this morning, God is doing something so, 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 so clear in our hearts. So hear me now, Lord. Show me your, your, your famous mercy. Oh God, be my Savior and rescue me. Then he broke through and transformed all my wailing into a whirling dance of ecstatic praise. He, was, he has torn the veil and lifted from me the sad heaviness of mourning. He wrapped me into the glory garments of gladness. Just quickly. So what David is speaking, he's prophesying about the veil that's getting torn. In the New Testament where Jesus said, Tetelestai, it is finished. He broke the cycle once and for all by declaring a shout. And as he shouted from the beginning, he said, let there be light. He was declaring the same word over us. Let there be light because light means the absence of darkness. He formally declared you free and right and ready to be used. How could I be silent when it is time to praise you? Now my heart sings out, Lord, bursting with joy. A bliss inside that keeps me singing. I can never, never, ever thank you enough. Just for a moment, let's just say about that. Just for a moment, just see God's hand over you. And this morning as I was sitting in front of the Lord in prayer, I saw where the, the Israelites were sitting before the sea. And they had Pharaoh at the back of them and a cloud of fire in between them. I said to the Lord, Lord, why did you take them through the night? Why didn't you just immediately let them go through? And the Lord said, because sometimes you need to confront and see what is your reality. So that you will be able to give it a name. And after naming it and believing God's word. And you know how many people does, do you need to do it? When Abraham went into, uh, the, not the debate, but he was speaking to God about Sodom and Gomorrah. He ended in, say, in saying the following, God, if there's only five righteous people, will you save the city? And I want to tell you that Lot, his wife, and his children was there. And he said there was not even five. So I want to make a statement this morning. If your whole family is there, I believe if there's one righteous man, one righteous man, God will save it. Lot was not in right standing because he went for that which he saw with the eye. He chose according to the flesh. But Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Just this morning for a quick, let's just bow our heads.
If you came into the service, you've never given your heart to Jesus. You've never given your heart to Jesus. Then I want you this morning to give your heart to Him. If you've never come in, made a commitment publicly where you've accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, then I want you to raise your hand right now. Just where you're sitting. You've never come to a place where you've accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so this morning, as I started off, I said to the Lord, Lord, I believe as we draw to the final message on the cycle breaker, I believe that the Lord is saying He wants to break certain cycles in your life. Certain continual things. Maybe you've been through a divorce twice, three times, four times. Maybe you've been bankrupted in your life three, four times. Maybe you end up broke every now and then. You end up, you say, Matthias, I have lack. Maybe you've got a cycle going back. You get yourself conducting yourself in a good fashion and every six months you fall into the spit and then you go back to your old ways. Maybe you've got a belief system where, you, where you've believed that, that, Lord, I'm not good enough. You've got this continual idea that I won't make it. I really believe this morning that there's an anointing because the word makes room to break any yoke. So if anyone, I just hear the Lord is saying, if you say, Lord, this morning, I mean business. I don't need to know what you are breaking in this morning. Maybe you've got this continual thing of people bullying you. Jy constant gebully word in die fysische. Dan wil ek het van ochend oor jou breek in die naam van Jesus. Hoe breek ons dit? This morning it's going to take us a leap of faith. I want, I want you to stand up. Because you're going to make a public declaration. I don't know what you are dealing with this morning. But I want this morning for you to stand up and to say, Lord, it is done. I'm not going to settle for this continuation in my life anymore. I'm taking out the obstacle out of the road so that my children don't need to fight my battle. If you've got a sickness that's continuing in your family, it's time to break that cycle. I want you to stand up this morning. If, you've, you, if the Lord's busy wanting to break a cycle in your life, your family's life, it's time for you to take it. I feel convinced. I'm sitting here, Lord, I've got a, a perverseness in my heart. I've got a perverseness in my heart. Let me the mic for Marie come bring. I've got a perverseness in my heart that I need to break. Maybe you're struggling in the area of your sexual identity. Maybe you are struggling in homosexuality or in a fornication or adultery. This morning, God's not looking on your sin to judge your sin. As I'm on the beginning of this of this uh, um, series. I said, Mike Bickle made a statement. He said, God's judgments are aimed at anything that will remove you from His love. His judgments is coming against that that's removing you from your beloved identity. I want to lay my hands on you. Please come, just come to the front. If it's possible. I just want to anoint you with oil. And I want you just as Valhalem is going to play the song. He's just going to play a victory song. 
I want you just to accept whatever the Lord is breaking in your heart right now. And I want my team to come as well. I want to just lay my hands on you. You're saying, Lord, my contracts don't get renewed. Business is not happening. Lord, there's no finances that's coming in. In the name of Jesus. Ek gaf jou vrouw net om vir my vir 2 minuten te sit, maar riet net een woord wat sy met ons wil deel. Jesus sê dat sy, sy brood is om, is om te eet dit wat die vader vir ons gee. Amen. So man shall not live from bread alone, but from every word that comes from the Lord's mouth. As jy baie honger is, kan jy gaan maak, dink jy gaan mis op een woord. <laughs> Kom ons woord net gaan. Uh, good morning, moere, um, Sal boon, oh nee, ek speel net. Die Heer het vir my een woord eindelijk gegeen twee weke terug. En ek het nie die geleentheid gehad om het te deel nie. En dit is eindelijk baie weird, want dit is baie timely. Dit het, ek het hier gesit en gegel oor, oor Matthijse woord. Ek kom met julle deel, hier, um, Jeremiah 29, from verse 4. This is what the, ek voel, dit is waar ons is op die oomlik. Um, op Godse tijdlijn. Je weet op Facebook het onze tijdlijn. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. As ons in exile, <laughs> ons is in flip in exile, die hele humanity is in exile. Ons is in exile, corona het ons, ons is in hands up, ons is gehands up. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters into marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number and do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city, South Africa, the world, to which I, which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty of God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and the diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you, you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have sent them. I have not sent them, says the Lord. Excuse. Ek wil vir julle sê, en nou gaan hy aan, want ons gaan nou hoor, en Jeremia, nou drie, en jy dit aangehaal, Jeremia, 29 vers 11, sê hy, for I know the plans I have for you. Ek wil vir julle sê, ons is in exile. Corona het ons in amal in hands up. Die profete het gekom, en hulle het hierdie ding al vervloek. Het corona al vervloek, laat, laat hy nie meer, een maal of een pa het nie. En corona is in vierde keer. Ek wil vir julle sê, nou, Daniel, last jaar, last jaar, toe dit, toe dit um, die ding was tussen um, um, Trump en, Trump en Biden. Ek sê, Heere, wie, Trump of Biden, en dit is so mals as die ander een. En dit is so mals as die ander een. Toe sê die Heere vir my, Daniel het drie koninkryke, drie koninkryke deurgestaan, ongoddelike konings. Wat sê hy daar, wat het hy gesê in Jeremia 29 vers 4? Hy sê, vermeerder, moet nie verminder nie, ons is, die wereld is in exile, maar hier, in jou omstandighede, is God, God. Ons moet op een plek kom, maar sê, Heere, nie meer, ek ga nou bid, ek vervloek er nou nie, Heere, wat moet ek bid? Moet nie laat die profete, en ek, ek, ek opereit in hy, in hy, in hy, in hy ding, maar moet nie, dat hierdie goed jylle dier mekaar ook nie, en Jeremia 11 sê hy, ek, so ek weet wat ek sy plan, wat sy plan ek het vir julle. Binnen in corona, ons is nou in een verkiesing, kan ek vir jou sê, dit maak die saak of het Ramaphosa, of wie, of wie, of wie is nie. God is God in jou huis. God is God in jou huis. The, the next movement of God is going to be God. The next movement of God is going to be God. In jou huis. Johan, kom gauw hier. Mag ek hierdie doen, my vriend? Hoor gauw hier, ek kom uit exile, ek is in exile, ek is in die, die, die moeilikste tyd, ek was baie lus om my eie kop weg te blaas die afgelopen vier maanden. Ek bedien hierdie klomp mamparas hier en ek laf hulle met my hele hart. En hierdie manne is vir my absoluut fantastisch. Hierdie man is twee weke terug in exile. Hy is in exile, hy is een ex-heroïne verslaafde. Hy kom maandag en hy is hoog soos een kuit, soos, soos een kuit. Hy is hoog soos een kuit. Ek bid vir hom vir afslag vertel in een minuut vir hierdie manne. Nou, ek wil vir julle sê, binnen in exile, 
Hij is een heroïne verslaafde binnen in exile. Hij heeft niks om voor te leef nie. En die Heere dag op, vir een man, wat, <laughs> om nie omdat hy goed is nie, omdat God goed is. Vertel vir hierdie mense, een minuut. Kom. Hallo mense, um, ja, ek het uh, heroïne vir 10 jaar gebruik, en um, gewoonlik krijg jy vieselike onttrekkings. En um, ek het geleen slaap in die bed, en uh, toe kry Marie een woord vir my, toe kom roep hulle my van die kamer af, hulle sal toe gaan. En um, toe, Gees hy vir my die woord en sy het vir my gebid, maar was die heilige gees wat die woord gegeet het vir haar en vir my gesê het dat, dat sy vir my gebid het vir aslag en ek het glad nie onttrek nie, nie een keer opgegooi of maagkramp en goed gehad nie, en, en er was net die Heere wat goed was, sonder hom is het niks moendlik nie. Nou is in my dans, Maaikie. Sê net, sê net gaan gevinnig net vir die, sê net, Sê net vir hulle, jy was al in die vorige reep, waar jy gekal toekie het, dan sal hulle... Ja, um, ek was al in een paar reeps gewees, dit is my seste een en die, so, um, ja, ek het al gekal toekie, waar hulle jou net los laat jou onttrek, en asjeblief hier en nooit weer. My, my boodskap, my boodskap is, of jy in exile is, maak die saak vir wat nie, increase in number, and do not decrease, want die Heere is in jou huis, en die volgende, die volgende revival, vind in jou huis, in jou slaapkamer plaas, ons kan joy hee, en ons het hoop, en ons het joy, in hierdie oomlik, dit maak die, 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 die wereld gaan nie verander nie, ek dink nie hierdie storykie, gaan beter raak nie, ek dink hier dit gaan beter raak nie, maar ek dink die fog, oor mooi, ek sê mooi, ek sê nie lelik nie, ek sê mooi, die fog, van wat die wereld is, en die wereld in die kerk, Gaan, ver, gaan, gaan verander. Mag, kan, ons in, kan ons in oorvloed, en kan ons in joy lewe, binnen in ons huis, en mag ons in oorvloed lewe, soos Daniel, en een goddeloze koninkryk. Ek gaan vir ons het afsluiten. Um, wie is geblees volgend? Ek weet nie van julle nie, maar yes, ons, ek het so excitement in my gees. Ek wil eindelijk nog een uur, ek denk ons kan nou, nou begin preek. <laughs> ek... Ek wil jou rechtig sien, en ek wil jou sien met hoop. I want to bless you with hope. I want to bless you with joy. And I want to bless the next generation that's coming out of us. Because God is for us and not against us. Net so vannig, Papa Vader, ek sien vanochtend ons gemeente. Ek sien elke ouwe te die woord oor. May you be blessed. May you know that God is for you and not against you. May you experience His goodness and kindness in Jesus' mighty name.